Hello everyone, my name is Kaylin Gross and I am a graduate research assistant at the University of Georgia Tifton campus. And today I'd like to talk with you about managing crabgrass um, as a forage. So typically crabgrass might be considered an underdog in, in hay and livestock production systems, but I'm gonna tell you and give you the benefits and management practices best suited um, on the farm. So crabgrass is a warm season annual but if utilized and managed properly, can come back year after year and can act as a perennial. Crabgrass is well suited for the coastal plains region. Um, they really like well-drained sandy type soils and they like the climate that, that are in the coastal plains. And this would be typically in the southeast or the southern parts of the United States. There are several species, including larger hairy crabgrass, and that's what pi is pictured on the right. As you can see, the stems are very hairy, and you also have smooth crabgrass in addition. So, as I mentioned, crabgrass can be an underdog, um, but is crabgrass a weed or is it a forage? So you might see as you're scrolling through the internet and you're looking up crabgrass, and you type crabgrass into Google, you might see some articles or publications that look like this. Crabgrass control in your yards or even how to get rid of crabgrass in your hay fields or pastures. But as we'll get into, if you have it, use it. So why choose crabgrass? It is a highly palatable forage speed stuff for livestock, so livestock really like the taste of crabgrass. And it can be used for grazing or for hay production and can provide moderate yields with very high quality. So this quality of crabgrass can even exceed the quality of Bermuda grass in many cases. And in addition to grazing or hay production, um, if you have the proper equipment, um, and if you're, you're trying to do something a little different, you can use uh, crabgrass uh, for baleage production. You do have that potential. Now, going back into grazing, um, there was a five-year study conducted by the Noble Research Foundation um, that looked at uh, steers grazing crabgrass, and they found that these steers gained 1.56 pounds per day um, over that five-year period. Um, per acre on an acre of crabgrass. So there are very great benefits to grazing crabgrass and utilizing that forage. Crabgrass can also be utilized in a double cropping system. So if you're wanting also to have a winter annual or a, uh, a cool season annual, then you can have crabgrass in the summer and also maybe a small grain uh, in the winter, like a cereal rye or a wheat that you can also harvest. So that can even give you the potential for an extended grazing system. And there might be even be the possibility for interseeding. There are um, some studies done or some producers might have even is, uh, noticed this themselves but crabgrass um, in their Bermuda fields or even Bahia fields, um, they might be able to benefit from having both of those forage types in, in the system. So if you choose to establish um, crabgrass from seed, here are just a couple of the establishment rules that you might want to look at. You're gonna wanna look at planting between April and May. And the soil needs to be firm, but well-drained. And this you can find in a sandy, sandy loam type soil. You're going to need a pH of between 5.5 and 7.5. And one crucial um, point is that you know, that soil temperature will need to be around 58 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure seed emergence. Three, three to five pounds of pure live seed per acre will need to be um, put out, either at a um, planted at a quarter inch depth or even through a broadcast type system. However, you will need to mix those seeds um, if you're planting with sand or a starter fertilizer. Those seeds are very small and can make it very difficult for 
for a smooth flow through a planter. But there are now seeds on the market that are coated that you wouldn't have to add sand or starter fertilizer. But you will need to fertilize um, 50 to 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre in a split application. So beginning um, after you planted or the seeds have started to emerge out of the soil, you can start your split application then. So grazing crabgrass. You're going to start grazing 30 to 45 days after planting. So when that forage gets between eight to 12 inches, that's when you can start grazing. You're only going to want to, you're going to want to stop grazing when that forage has reached three to six inches. This can be done through rotational grazing to ensure for stand longevity. You're, if, if you're trying to extend the grazing season using a double cropping system, or if crabgrass is just your sole forage, you're, you're going to need to use that forage for as long as you can to get that bang for your buck. So just a little bit about quality, you might can find five to 27% in crude protein and 41 to 79% in digestible dry matter. Now there is a big range because if you wait till after that 12 inches to start grazing, you could lose a lot in quality because of the maturity of the forage. An important grazing consideration is that if you're planning to move cattle off of a crabgrass pasture to maybe a Bermuda pasture or a Bahia pasture, you're going to want to put those cattle in a sacrifice area and give them clean hay for approximately three days. This will ensure that any crabgrass seeds that were consumed will pass through the, through the, through the digestive system and will eliminate spread of crabgrass to other pastures involuntarily through manure. So that is an important consideration to remember. So crabgrass hay should be cut between boot and heading stage, which is between 18 and 24 inches. Crabgrass does have a longer drying period because of that coarser stem and it is a more of a lush type forage. So you're going to need a mower conditioner or a tether to reduce that drying time. Now, if you don't have that, uh, if you don't have a mower conditioner or a tether, that could cause issues if you were to get untimely rainstorms um, and you're not able to have that proper dry down time. Now you might see a dark brown color when that forage is dried for hay, but don't be alarmed, it is not an indication of forage quality. Crude protein can range between six and 11% and digestible dry matter between 65 and 70%. So as I mentioned earlier, crabgrass can act as a perennial with proper management. So during the growing season between June and the first frost, allow that forage to produce seeds. Those seeds will then drop. And then in the fall, if you're planning to use a double cropping system, in the fall, right before you plant, you can do a harrow or light till. And then if you miss that fall tillage, you can wait until May after you have harvested that winter annual to till the crabgrass and you will still get a stand. Now, if crabgrass is your sole forage, you don't have to, to till in the fall. You can wait until February or March to disc or till and that forage will come up. So some conclusions. Crabgrass is a high quality and highly palatable forage. But take precautions when you choose to graze to prevent involuntary emergence. Special equipment might be needed to make high quality hay or even baleage. And though it, this is an annual, it can be managed to act as a perennial. And like I said, if you have it, use it. Here are some references of just some extension publications and studies that I have looked at that would be a great benefit if you are um, planning to utilize crabgrass on your farm. I hope this was very informational and um, thank you for listening.